What's up guys, how's it going? So I've lived in Orlando my entire life. Orlando is one of the biggest tourist destinations in the entire world. I know a lot of people aren't just coming here for amusement parks, they're coming to experience something that they've never experienced before, like racing go-karts. Now in Orlando, there's quite a few racetracks. Now I decided with my 13 years of karting knowledge, I'm gonna go to each of these racetracks and review them. I wanna let you guys know what's worth it and what's not. If you guys want an actual racing experience, it's best to hear from a driver themselves to let you know what is the best bang for your buck. So I went to the three major karting tracks in the Orlando area, which is Andretti Indoor Karting, K1 Speed, and Orlando Kart Center. Now two of these tracks are indoor karting facilities, and I know a lot of you guys will say that those two don't compare to an outdoor racetrack, but when you compare that they're all around the same price and they're all in the same area, I think it's fair to rank these guys side by side to show you what is the best karting track in Orlando. But before we get into that, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot knowing that you guys are supporting the channel and the content that I'm putting out for you guys. So with that being said, let's get started with the video. So I'm gonna review these places in the order that I went with them and just basically go through the pros and cons of each facility and each karting track that I drove on. The first track that I visited was Andretti Indoor Karting. Now this place is really cool. It's one of the tracks that I was more excited to race at. Not only was I excited to race at the karting track, but they do have a big arcade and a lot of other fun things to do like bowling and, and other stuff. So it was pretty cool and exciting to go to this track and experience the atmosphere that was there. So I was pretty excited going into this because when I looked at the racetrack, there's a lot of corners. It looked pretty technical. I've also heard that electric carts are pretty torquey and pretty fast on that acceleration. So I was pretty excited to try out electric carts for the first time. So finally I got in the go-kart and this is when I realized that these carts probably didn't go as fast as I thought they would when a fake engine noise started to play in a speaker located behind my helmet. I pulled out on the racetrack and these things didn't really go as fast as I thought they would. Uh, they definitely had a little bit of punch, but they were a lot slower than I originally thought. Now you do get a pass button which does increase the speed somewhat, but it definitely didn't increase the speed to the speed that they advertised. A lot of the advertisements I've seen said that you go over 35 mile an hour, which I highly doubt. Um, even with the skill level that I have, it was difficult to get going that fast, especially when you do get up to the top speed, the engines stop going fast. Once you hit a certain point, the engine stops going faster, and the only thing that ends up going faster is the noise you hear behind your head. So there's a lot of perception that you're going fast, when in reality, you're not going that quick. Another downside to this racetrack is it ended up being really tight and so it made it very difficult to pass. Even with the push to pass button, it definitely made it hard to get around drivers. Even with my skill level, it was definitely difficult to time passes on other drivers. You know, if you stayed in the middle of the racetrack, you could basically block the whole racetrack and not allow anybody by you and it would be really difficult to enjoy your time when you're there. Especially if you're a more skilled driver, you want to get out there and try and set a good lap and you feel like you're constantly running into other drivers and you can't get by them to get a good clean lap. So for somebody who actually enjoys racing and is passionate about racing, it's definitely difficult to be excited to race this racetrack more. The elevation of the racetrack was pretty cool, and another cool thing was the grip level was very low, so it made the carts feel like they were on the edge. Even though they're going really slow, the carts definitely slid a lot, and so you definitely had to lift for the corners, and there was an element of skill that was involved in driving these things. You don't need the brakes necessarily, but you definitely feel like you're sliding through the corners, which added a little bit of excitement to these carts. Overall, Andretti definitely didn't live up to the expectations that I thought it would, but it was definitely fun, and it was enjoyable with the racetrack to learn different racing lines and to try and go faster. Especially when you can drift the carts off corner, you definitely had a lot of control over the go-kart, and it was fun to drive. The next track I went to was K1 Speed. Now, K1 has facilities all across the country, so I thought for sure this group would be better off than Andretti. I figured the carts would be slower at Andretti because it is advertised more as an arcade and not necessarily a go-kart track. So I figured K1 would have their stuff together because they're advertised more as a go-kart track and less of an arcade. When I arrived, I still had all my GoPro equipment, um, but I actually won't be able to show video because they don't allow you to have GoPros at the racetrack. 
Um, it's not that they don't allow cameras on the track. It's just because they don't allow a GoPro. Um, you can rent their camera that's not great quality. Um, and that kind of upset me going into it because the only reason I was here was to film. Um, and it really upset me that they didn't let me use my camera. I didn't really want to use their rental camera that's not super great quality. Anybody that uses action camera knows that GoPro is probably the best one and you'll get the best filming out of it. So it really bothered me that they didn't let me use my camera and that they didn't really advertise that anywhere. I eventually went on their website and scrolled down through a whole Q&A and at the very bottom of it, that's where you found out that you can't use your GoPro. So they don't really advertise it until you get there. I think that's intentional so that they can rent you their action camera. But when I got on the racetrack, these carts felt the same speed as the carts at Andretti, even though that they're advertised to go 45 mile an hour plus. And with the racetrack being as simple as it was, it was super boring because you didn't have to lift anywhere. The entire track was flat out. This made it super difficult to pass and super difficult to actually have fun out there. The whole point of racing is you wanna actually be driving. You wanna be in control of it. When the fastest way to go on the racetrack is flat out, it's not really that fun because you lose control over what you can do. There's a set limit as how fast you can go and no matter what you do, you probably won't go faster than that. I've driven racetracks that are over a mile long all across the country at over 70 plus mile an hour, and I can only be a tenth of a second off my lap time. But when I got in this cart, I started it at one time, and by the end of the session, I was over a second slower, um, and I was flat out the whole time. And I felt the go-karts were getting slower as the session was going on, and I feel that they were turning down the power on these things while I was out there. That is something that is common with electric carts because they can turn up and turn down the power. Um, so that really is frustrating because you pay to go 45 mile an hour like they advertise, and when you're going around the racetrack at 30 or less than that, it's kind of disappointing because that's not what you paid for. I paid to go fast and I want to go fast. So overall, I was really let down by my experience at K1. I thought for sure their karting would be a lot better than Andretti just because it was advertised that way. And it really wasn't. The track was really boring. The carts were really slow and you couldn't really do anything while you're out there. At least at Andretti, even though the carts were slow, you did feel like you're on the limit. You felt like you're pushing the limits of the go-kart or this, you didn't feel like you were even getting close to the limit of the go-kart. So overall, you know, if you're insisting on doing indoor karting, I would definitely go to Andretti over K1 just because you're gonna have a much more enjoyable time. And finally, the last track that I went to review is Orlando Kart Center. Now this racetrack, I've raced that since I've started karting, so I might be a little biased in my opinion of it, but this racetrack is built for go-karts. Its sole purpose is go-kart racing. There's no arcade or anything, but when you go out on the racetrack, you have a much better experience than you do at all the other racetracks. They advertise that the go-karts go over 45 mile an hour, and they do. If you get in a slipstream or if you're bumping together, you can definitely get these things up to 45 mile an hour. It's also super easy to pass at this racetrack because it is purpose built for go-kart racing. The track is pretty wide and you can fit two or three go-karts wide going into a corner. That makes it definitely a lot easier to pass when you're out there. So a driver who's more experienced is gonna be able to slice through the field a lot faster. You can see in this video that I passed quite a few guys and it was a lot easier than the passing that I was doing at Andretti. Also, this track is huge. It's way bigger than all the other racetracks. At Orlando Kart Center, the lap time is pretty long and that is just because the track is long. You know, you actually are going fast for a long period of time. You're going down the same straightaway that every other go-kart goes down. This track is designed for go-karts to go super fast down the straightaway, and so that's what you're getting when you're at this racetrack. This track has a lot of grip, so you feel really confident with the go-kart, and because you're going fast, you definitely feel like you're pushing the limits of the go-kart, and it's definitely a really good experience for people who wanna show their driving abilities and prove that they can be a good driver. Some of these corners you're entering at over 30 mile an hour and it's super fun and exciting. And you feel the speed, you feel that adrenaline when you're driving. You can also race during the day and at night so you do get a different feel while you're out there on the racetrack. Overall, Orlando Kart Center does have the best facility for go-karting in the Orlando area. If you're coming to town to race go-karts, go to Orlando Kart Center. It'll be the best experience you have. You're gonna go faster, you're gonna have more grip and you're gonna have more fun. And considering it's only a little bit more than all the other go-karts, it's worth the money. This track also has leagues and other special events that they do. So when you're out there, there is some incentive to want to go faster and to want to learn the skill of racing. It's a great track to learn the basic steps into racing and it'll definitely introduce you into a completely different sport that you probably had no experience in before. So I'd rank these tracks. Orlando Kart Center is number one, Andretti is second, and then K1 Speed in third. It's definitely worth your money to spend it at Orlando Kart Center. So that's it. Those are the best tracks in Orlando, Florida. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment if you guys want some advice on how to drive rental carts. I definitely picked up a few things that I could possibly share with you guys 
to make you guys faster while you're out there driving these race carts. Again, make sure to pick up your Norberg Nation merch. It helps me out so much knowing that you guys are supporting this channel and supporting the videos that I bring to you guys. If you like videos like this and other karting related content, make sure to like and subscribe to the video. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram and on my Facebook. That's where you'll get any updates on my racing career and also the link to my merch store where you can purchase your Norberg Nation merch. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you at the next one.